hope. I'm often wary of hope. Perhaps it comes from many hopes of my childhood being unfulfilled, the hope for a cure that I advertised throughout my state as a literal poster child for my disease. A cure that didn't come for me. But even though I didn't get what I wanted, my prayers weren't answered the way I thought they should be. I'm still a person of hope because I'm a person of love, of real love, and of gratitude. And I've always been grateful for my family, my loving parents and sister, and the sacrifices that they've made for me. They reflect God's love in their self-giving care for me. And so with that love and gratitude, well, there is hope. And that hope, that means that darkness will never overtake me. That in any dark situation, there is light. And I came to grow more deeply in love and gratitude and therefore hope when I came to know and believe in Christ. And for me, that happened as an adult uh, in my late 20s. And I've been growing my relationship with God ever since. And I've been reflecting upon God's intimate union with each and every human being throughout Lent on my blog, authorchristinachase.com. And now we come to Vitare Sunday, which Vitare means rejoice. It's the middle of Lent, and we are to reflect upon the great joy of our Christian faith, the great joy of human life. And what is that joy? That we are loved into being, that God's love is infinite and eternal, and that God chose to intimately share our human lives with us. So even when we do struggle, when we struggle because of sin or when we struggle because of the imperfections of the world and the natural disasters or ailments or viruses or diseases in life, whenever we struggle or suffer, God has chosen to struggle and suffer with us. We see this most amazingly in Christ in his passion, his 40 days in the desert, his agony in the Garden of Gethsemane, his way of the cross, scourged and beaten, and then crucified, nailed to a cross to die. He certainly knows dread and anxiety. He's prayed God for things to change, let there be some other way, but then said, not my human limited will, but thy will, the divine will, be done. And he gave himself completely to us. And so we receive him. Of course, right now we cannot receive him sacramentally because there are no masses available to the general public. So we can't go in person to receive the Lord in the Eucharist and in the community of believers be present with Christ. We can, however, participate in the Eucharist and the sacred liturgies through televised masses and those available on the internet and by reading the readings and praying the prayers and singing the hymns. And what we learn today, we learn about light. Christ is the light of the world. And we know that this is the light that the darkness can never overcome. And we learn about being healed of blindness so that we may truly see. And what do we see in this time of darkness and uncertainty, in this time of fear and anxiety and struggle? Do we see who we are and where we are? Do we know that we are made in the image of God Almighty and that God chose to create this world, this life, chose to create you?
and he loves us into being and that Christ chose to live here among us as one of us. And he did not live a life that was free of turmoil, that's for sure, or free of suffering. No, he chose to suffer with us. That's what we've been reflecting upon all Lent, what we are called to reflect upon as we walk with Christ in his passion. And on this day, midway through Lent, we're called to take a minute and step back and remember what lies ahead, to remember hope, to remember that though Jesus was killed upon the cross and though he was buried, he rose again from the dead. His body became alive again, glorified, resurrected, ascended into heaven, that God has opened up the heavenly realm so that even when our earthly lives end, our lives continue eternally with him in love. And so though we are scattered through social distancing because of COVID-19 and wanting to stop the spread of this virus and protect the vulnerable, I am among the vulnerable. Even though we are social distancing, we know that we are united in Christ. So if you're feeling scared or lonely, know that you're not alone. We are all in this together. And we are all in this together with Christ. Jesus was scared. Jesus was alone. He felt alone. He was abandoned. He was rejected. He agonized. So God knows what you're experiencing, what we're all experiencing. And he is with us and wants to give us his strength and courage. So we take courage today on this Litari Sunday. Rejoice in the midst of a pandemic. Yes, rejoice because God is here. Christ is with us. We are not alone. And though we do judge by appearances as human beings, God does not. God knows the whole story. God sees the big picture. And so let's not be blinded by uh, the details of the news or the terrors and fears, or even the pain and the grieving and sorrow of the moment for eternity is waiting for us. God wants to give to us eternal lives of joy. And this is Joy Sunday. And so our hope is in love, love that never fails, love that endures forever love that has always been with us, is here with us now, love that will always be ours. And all we need to do is to turn to God, turn to Christ, and to know that he is with us, in us, living through us, always and everywhere. And so united in Christ, we are united to one another, my brothers and sisters, in faith and in hope in love. And I hope that you have a blessed, joy Sunday. Taking a deep breath, remembering the big picture, and knowing that we are never alone, and that love never fails. Peace.